Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Bloom, group publisher of Roofing Contractor, and welcome to our Best of Success podcast show. It is such an honor to have with me today Matt DeBara, who is a fourth-generation contractor. Matt, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Well, Matt, it's been really fun with the conversations that we have had over the past, uh, really the past year. Um, and it is no doubt that hiring is one of your passions. And so to all the contractors listening, what are the top three most important tips when it comes to hiring? My favorite topic in the world. Um, and thank you again for having me. I can't believe it's already been a been a year that we've been uh, <laughs> been in touch about this. So I would say the first thing, if if you're a contractor, whether it be a a roofer uh, or you're doing you know you're hiring somebody for um, you know interior drywall work, is thinking about the candidate's perspective. So we ask this one powerful question: Would you work for you? Five words, and. What that's meant to do is it's meant to spark the thought of if I'm a candidate and I go online and I look for, you know, uh, uh, let's say it's a roofing job. Right. And I'm looking to, you know, I'm looking to you do asphalt shingles, let's say. Right. So I type in the relevant words and locations for where you are. What shows up for your company? Do you have a career page? Do you have a career video? Who are your hiring competitors? What is your online presence like? You see, most companies, if you're like how I was for a long time, you have a good understanding of who your competitors are if you bid a project, right? You might say, well, if this person's bidding it, I'll never get it because, you know, they're really cheap and they just, you know, they lowball pricing or, or if this company bids it, we always get it because they happen to be the one or two that we're just slightly below and we offer the same or better service. So thinking about hiring from the perspective of the candidate and who your hiring competitors are shapes then how you make your company look online. I love it. That's awesome. Great advice. And then the, the second one is remembering that it's a job ad and not a job posting. And so we've done a, a great example of this um, as if you're hiring a project manager, we do headline testing and uh, for our clients when we, when we do hiring for them at the contractor consultants. And so what we found is one, one, one client had a headline of a project manager, project manager wanted was a headline. And in a duration of, I believe it was two weeks, they got 13 qualified applicants, meaning people we thought were worth calling um, or they did at that time. We tested different headlines. And the one that won was, um, you know, hiring project manager for cutting edge construction. Um, and that got three times the qualified applicants changing nothing more than just the headline. So thinking about it like an advertisement, making it short, having three bullet points that make it pop that people see, oh, you know, guaranteed overtime or, you know, no commute bigger than 30 minutes. What is your elevator pitch for your company? And then putting that in a job advertisement. Yeah, that's really cool. So, so, so now do you, um, if I'm a smaller contractor, would you, um, I guess, would you talk to your marketing folks to make sure that you're, you're, you're creating that. So it really is popping like what you're saying. The, the easiest way we found is to two things. One, if you're not sure what's great about your company, sometimes when you're you're inside, it's yeah. hard it's hard to see the greatness. Um, and we found greatness in, in every company we work with. Take the two or three people that you could, we joke, but that you could, if you could clone them, you would. Take them and sit down with them for 15 minutes and say, hey, you've been here for six years. What do you like about the company? What What's made you stay here? What, what, are we, what have we done to you to make you feel special? Like, understand why they've dedicated, you know, three years or five or 10 years to, to your company and, and to the growth opportunities you have. That helps you understand the elevator pitch, right? The bullet points you can offer. You know, it might be, hey, when I had this rough time and my car broke down, you, you really helped me out. Or the, the little things you do as, as a business owner, manager, or someone within the company that you might not stop and think, well, I'm a hero, you know, or I did something amazing. It's just the kindness of your heart. Once you've done that, now it's how do we put it in a, in a way that makes it exciting? And we, we can do the same thing. You could have, we do this for companies, but basically it's, you can do um, your marketing person is one. You can go online and there's, there's research more so than what we're talking about now. But the way to test it, which I think is most important, is to take that same job ad and bring it to the people at your company and say, hey, which of these sounds more exciting? Which of these headlines would you click? You know, if I only, if you only had one of these four 
uh, headlines, which one looks more exciting to you? And they go, well, this one sounds better. Okay, great. If you have five or six people say the same thing, there you go. There's some market feedback. Same thing with the job ad. So we have so many resources already within your company, even if you're a smaller company with three, four. I mean, we started 20 years ago. I mean, it was for us, it was eight, 10 people when we first started. So, you know, you can leverage that. What great, what a great way. Use your people. I mean, that's awesome. What would you click on? That's great. That is, that's a, uh, that's awesome advice. What's number three? And number three is really thinking about um, how, so one of the biggest issues we have in construction, and you know, as you're listening, I'm sure you can relate, is how many times have we had somebody say to us, you know, I can, you know, I've been doing drywall for 20 years, you know, I've been, I can, you know, I can put X amount of square per day, no problem, right? Like whatever, whatever that, that talk is that they say they can do, the hardest part in our industry is actually seeing the, the work, especially for field positions. They're very hard to hire for. Reason is somebody could be horrible at interviewing, but amazing in the field. Somebody could be amazing at interviewing and horrible in the field. And at the end of the day, you're not hiring for their ability to interview, you're hiring for their field skills, but you're making your hiring decision on how they interview. So it's kind of a weird thing when you think about it. It's like, you're not oh, hiring. Totally. So what we found is if you can build a skills assessment. So if you have a yard, a warehouse, an office, or you can even have somebody come to a job site after hours, maybe for an hour or two, design an assessment where someone can show up and physically do the work. So, you know, if it's roofing, you might have, you know, the roof set up, you might have your, you know, doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're doing, you know, if it's asphalt shingles or, you know, here in California, we have, we have all sorts of different roofing materials, you know, but the, the goal is have it be, and it could be, um, we say no less than two hours, no more than eight hours. And a lot of times it's a small amount of pay. They sign a waiver. This is how much I'm being paid. And you get to physically see so many things. One, do they show up on time and how do they dress? Number two, do they have their own small tools? Number three, how do they pick up the material? I mean, if you're a seasoned contractor, right? And we we know, I mean, we can tell when somebody walks up, you know, if they if they by what brand hammer they have. I mean, we know we just know these things because this is what we we're around all the time. We typically can tell within an hour, but it preserves culture. Number one, because you're not bringing people in the field. Like my in the old days, my dad used to bring somebody in. I had a check in call at nine o'clock. He'd be like, do we send them home or not? You know, and I'd be like, no, no, they're going to make it to lunch. Call me in three hours. You know, that was the old way of hiring. And it was just put them in. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And, and now it's, it's we want to preserve culture. So we don't want that that spinning wheel of, well, they didn't make it. Okay, here's another, you know, great hire. And then they don't make it, right? Oh, uh, so, yeah. You're like, just what I thought they'd be yeah. great. You're like, not at all. <laughs> yeah. So you can kind of put it in a, in a controlled environment. And then the other thing is, we found a lot of data on people missing out on great hires because they get they get scooped up so quick. And what sometimes as companies, we have a little bit of, of interview fatigue or, or fear, right? We might interview somebody and think, well, they answered some questions good. All right, I'll have them interview with Sarah or I'll have them talk to Mike, right? And then Mike's busy. So it's three days before it gets on Mike's calendar, but this person's interviewing every day. So when you, when you focus and you have a skills assessment, you immediately can move to something that's measurable. Yeah, totally. So let's talk about that skills assessment. So they show up on the job and you said, you know, you look for certain things like how they, what kind of hammer they have, what type of, what, what or do, uh, how does that work? What are your skills assessment? So I, the one that, the one that we use, so predominantly, so licensed general contractor, masonry concrete, right? So we do roofing, we do drywall. Um, but the one that we, we have the most internal people for is masonry and concrete. And so what they do is they show up to my yard, right? Separate from the team. Um, and there's a checklist of what we basically do an intake form. Okay. Can you lay brick? Yep. Can you lay veneer brick? Yep. Stucco. And we tick this box Then my yard manager knows what materials are required. We use leftover materials from jobs. We put yeah. it in a corner. They have a sheet. They flip it over. It tells them like you would on a project. It's like, sure. Hey, this is what we want built. This is what we, you know, they have all, we verify they have the tools, the equipment. And for us, we do a full day assessment. So we have them build a, a small block wall. We have them build a brick on one side. So full brick on one side, a veneer on another. Um, but you can model this. I mean, we've had clients on for the contractor consultants do this plumbing, HVAC, electrical, roofing. It, like, I mean, it works across the board. It's what skill set do you want to see and measure against? Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Well, what great advice. So to rattle those off to me. The top three things you need to do are... So number one, think from the candidate's perspective, right? Know your hiring competitors, know your online profile, and know what comes up if a candidate is Googling, you know, 
drywall installer job near me, right? The most simple keywords that they might, you know, they might put in is most likely what's going to happen. Um, number two is mastering the job ad. So remembering that it's not a job posting, it's a job ad. Exciting headlines, short, and three bullet points that are three offerings, your elevator pitch to your company. And number three is the skills assessment. Build a way, whether it's two hours or you want to do a full day, to evaluate the physical skill set of the candidate. And that could even be for office or administrative roles. You can do it for a bookkeeper. You can do it for a project manager, an estimator, a salesperson. Um, but quick, easy things that you can action right from uh, listening to this. I love it. Great advice. Great advice, Matt. Thank you so much. And hey, you know, if anybody has any questions, how do they find you? How do they ask questions? Yeah, they can reach out to me. I love this stuff. So um, email is great. MD at the contractor consultants or the website, the contractor consultants.com. We got a lot of videos and things that can can help and, and dive deeper. I love it. Well, thank you so much. And if anybody has any questions for us, it is roofingcontractor.com or wconline.com. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for all our free content, especially follow us on all our social media channels so you can stay up to date in all the great interviews we are doing with great content like we are today with Matt. But most importantly, stay safe and healthy, and we can't wait to talk to you soon. Matt, thanks so much for the great insight. Thanks, Joe.